Hello and welcome to a special interview with The Print. Today we have someone very special, someone who has, be, who has been in public life since the 1950s, practically from the time of India's independence. He is none other than five-time Lok Sabha MP, former Union Cabinet Minister and someone well known in, in political circles, not just in Kerala but all across India. He is a veteran politician, journalist, writer, public intellectual, don't many more hats. We have K.P. Unnikrishnan, uh, now 87 years old, uh, from his home, Kodikod. So we are at the cusp of another Lok Sabha election in 2024. And you have been associated with politics from the 1950s. And this election, do you have any clue as to what is going to be the the outcome do you think a um, third term for modi is inevitable I, i'm not sure i don't think so i wouldn't uh, uh, attempt a prediction or anything of that kind but uh, lots of problems for modi he has uh, but equally there are more problems probably for Congress and other opposition parties. The India Alliance. There's an India Alliance. Yes, yes. yes. The India Alliance uh, still born, I don't know. Yes. Mm. <laughs> how, how do you see this election playing out in Kerala? Last time, in 2019, the Congress and the UDF won 19 seats, while the LDF was limited to one seat, just mm. one seat. So, do you see a repeat of that kind of scenario with Rahul Gandhi being confirmed to contest again from Wayanad? So, do you see that playing out again? No, Rahul's contest has hardly any meaning as far as Kerala's results are concerned. And Kerala has its own political scenario, uh, which is old for, for quite some time, UDF and LDF. That is the C primarily CPM and Congress. So I think still Congress and UDF will gain more seats here, but I can't, I don't want to predict numbers again. Uh, Congress and Muslim League should do well. Uh, and I, I don't see uh, BJP making a headway. At best, he may get a seat or two, not more than that. You, you must have heard that the incumbent Vadagara MP, K. Muralidharan, son of K. Karunakaran, has switched seats to Trishur. Uh, do you see that as a, you know, it's, it's primarily meant to offset the damage caused by his sister, Patmaja Venugobal, going to the BJP. So they have shifted, the Congress has shifted K. Muralidharan from Vadagara, where he is sitting MP, to Trishur. So, how do you see that? Is that a strategic, uh, something called a master stroke, or do you see that? Uh, it's not a stroke of that kind. They had to take a decision when Padmaja shifted. I don't think Padmaja is a big factor in politics of Kerala. She has never been. She probably lost twice or thrice. Twice. Mm. Uh, but it may be of some advantage to BJP outside Kerala to project Karunagaran, former chief minister, Congress leader, his daughter has joined. And similarly, Anthony, Anthony son. son. That may... Uh, help BJP in that way, not otherwise. So, uh, but uh, Suresh Gobi was supposed to be a contender in Trishur for the BJP. He was seen as a winnable candidate in Trishur. Mm. So, Murli Dharan now going to Trishur and contesting instead of Prataban, who was seen as somebody at the risk of, you know, losing his seat because of various factors. Uh, so, do you see that as a, you know, th th there's another subplot to this. The LDF is using this, the entire Patmaja shifting to the BJP, 
to appeal to the Muslims to vote for the LDF and not the UDF because today the people who are elected from Congress ticket could leave for uh, BJP. That's their argument. That, that's what the LDF is saying. So do you see this, this move from Vatagara to Trishur of K. Murlidharan blunting that kind of a campaign by the LDF, the CPM? I don't think whether it will, I don't know whether it will blunt. Uh, this kind of propaganda is inevitable in a, in a pre-election situation. I don't attach much significance to it. Okay. And how do you see this election, uh, you know, the, the broader narrative of this election? In Kerala, it's the India alliance competing against itself. Do you uh, think Rahul Gandhi should have contested from outside Kerala or somewhere maybe in Tamil Nadu or Karnataka or Andhra or Telangana where the where he would he would have been contesting against a BJP candidate when his primary contest or the Congress is primarily locked in a contest with the BJP. Does that send a bad message to the India Alliance, the people voting for the India Alliance that Rahul is contesting against a party which is technically in the India Alliance, the CPI in Wayanad? I don't uh, see much of an argument. I can't say. Uh, it was for him to decide or for Congress uh, High Command to decide where he should contest from. He's contesting probably from Amethi as well, but I he's looking know. for a safe seat mm. uh, as a second seat. I don't know the logic or the arguments behind it. He may contest from Amethi. But uh, he has a safe seat in Vainad. So let's come to your, your political career. You started politics in the 1950s. You joined uh, the Congress in, in the 19, late 1950s, but you have been associated with the Socialist Party in your college days. Then you joined Congress uh, in the late 50s, there after you were the the election agent of V.K. Krishnaman in 1962 uh, in Bombay against Acharya Kriplani. And that was an election... Not election agent. Election in charge. Uh, yes. And that was a very critical election because V.K. Krishnaman was being under siege by... under siege from all the opposition parties, the socialists in, most prominently. And they wanted to defeat him in Bombay and it was a prestige election for Nehru as well and you won that election for him. You were his uh, in the election in charge and you ensured uh, that win. Can you recall some some of the things from that election? I wouldn't say I ensured or anything. I was working for Krishna Menon. You are yeah. a, uh, you are a relative. Uh, he's related. Uh, yeah, that is not important. Yeah. But uh, uh, I was impressed by his, his political career as well as his uh, ideas. I was, uh, that is why I worked, I was sent by Indira Gandhi, who was Congress president then. And I was uh, to coordinate certain things, I did it. Okay. So, uh, and later V.K. Krishnamanan had to resign not long yes, thereafter. Yes, yes. And uh, then the Congress politics changed completely. You were with uh, the Indira Gandhi against the, the other group, the syndicate. Mm. You stood with her. Yeah. There was a rumor that although you contested first in 1971, there's a rumor that you were also in contention for a seat in 1967. Is that true? Yes. So can you... I was uh, to get a seat in 67 itself because Congress President then Kamaraj and Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister, supported my candidature. And also a few others like D.P. Mishra, Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh and others. 
but uh, Murarji Bhai was opposed to it. He said, I am a communist mm. and I drink. Mm. <laughs> so these things were brought up. Everybody laughed in the meeting, I am told. Uh, but uh, later, of course, after he became Prime Minister, he told Ravindra Varma that he was misinformed. Mm. He's not such a bad fellow. Okay. <laughs> mm. And but, uh, so uh, that's why I was denied a ticket. Because of Moraji? Yes. Okay. In 67. 67. And uh, in 1971 again, you contested, but it was uh, as an afterthought. Because in 1971, Leela Damodra Menon had already begun her campaign in Wadagara. And only later, Indira Gandhi announced you as the candidate of Congress in Watagara. Mm. So, how did that come Indira about? Indira Gandhi didn't announce. Congress president. Congress president announced, yes. Jigzivan Rao yeah. announced. Uh, how did it come about, means? I mean, they decided to. I mean, why the late. Uh, why, why was it uh, a, a late decision? It was a late decision because KPCC had to recommend the first list. Okay. They delayed it. They delayed it. Uh, so. They didn't know probably the thinking of the high command. I don't know how. Anyhow, I was told by then General Secretary Bhaguna to go and file the, my nomination. Okay. Hemavati Nandan Bhaguna, H.N. Bhaguna. Hmm? H.N. Bhaguna. Yes. He was General Secretary of the ICC. You, your views of the emergency, you have you stood by Indira Gandhi during the emergency. You stood as a candidate again in 1977. You won again on a <coughs> Congress ticket. <coughs> you won again on a Congress ticket in 1977. So, and but in 19 in the next uh, later on, you 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 left the Congress and you were you were with the Congress. You the the uh, so how how did that come about well i had differences about uh, emergency per se and i shifted uh, because of that various other reasons i had to shift and i myself Sharath Pawar and few other, uh, also to some extent. Mm. We decided not to support these things. Mm. So I decided, and um, the left friend then came out to support me, mm. my candidates. Mm. And later on, you were you were with the Congress Socialists. Yeah. And you were the party leader. You represent mm. the Congress Socialists mm. in uh, 1984 elections, 1989, yeah, yeah. uh. 1991. Mm. Uh, and you were a cabinet minister in 1989 yeah. in the VP Singh yes, cabinet. Yes, yes. You are also uh, the man in charge of the evacuation of the repatriation yeah. of people from Kuwait, yeah. in the Gulf War. Yeah. So. Uh, you were with the le left front in Kerala all mm. that, all those years. And so do you have any, uh, you know, you were, you were one, one of the very strong voices in the parliament, in the Bofors camp. Also, you were opposed to Rajiv Gandhi on many o other occasions. So h how do you recall that period, the 1980s? Uh -huh. uh, and nothing personal, but on Bofors, I... I had certain documents and other things, so I came out with that and I became a big issue because of that. Uh, but then I was, uh, I had my strong reservations about BJP and its communal politics. And I knew that things will go bad if they are able to 
be in a sentence and i told vp singh also that you are big support for them in up and other hindi speaking states will harm these uh, our uh, basic positions and that almost happened and in in by the 90s you again switched over to the congress so how did that come about the as i told you i knew that congress was the only relevant opposition to bjp's politics was that was that uh, influenced by the ram janmabhoomi movement no no i wouldn't say ram janmabhoomi was the only Trigger. thing yeah it was there as a indicator of bjp's whole political line uh, but uh, generally i felt congress can alone can fight this bjp tendencies and um, who talked you into rejoining the congress was that uh, they did they me. did they approach you nobody talked to me nobody talked to you nobody talked to me uh, i knew i knew my, told my many of my friends also who were unwilling to come back to congress that this is how it is and narasimha rao initiated it or narasimha no, rao i wouldn't say initiated he he supported this he supported it and did you also speak to sonia gandhi at, at that point no she had come in later okay hmm. so basically it was congress president and yeah. who, and pri- he was also the prime minister at that yeah, time yes so it was uh, narasimha rao who was in charge of 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 the party then and you but there is a very interesting prelude to that there is a very interesting election in 1991 in kerala which is still being debated in daily uh, shows talk shows people speak about it all the time and the ldf they never tire of of initiating that debate every now and then they come up with that argument the 1991 experiment in wadagara where you were pitted against a congress plus a bjp plus muslim league candidate that's the argument advocate Rat- ratna singh was supposed to be a congress muslim league which is the udf plus the bjp also supported the candidature of ratna singh against you your holy b holy b yeah the famous holy b coinage so you are uh, you are the left front candidate and you are you are contesting against all these parties so how did that you know why did that happen how did that happen <laughs> i don't know how did it happen so for them other elements who were primarily congress how congress could get involved with such a uh, coalition or i wouldn't call a coalition arrangement Uh, there was can't. a quid pro quo you were supported the candidature of advocate ratna singh was supported by the bjp for a return of support in beipur was that the arrangement no 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 that was not a, that was not the quid, quid pro quo that's the argument that the left front makes no that is not uh, only correct but why did they want to defeat you so desperately was that k karunakaran who was behind it he was one of the factors i don't know why <laughs> did <coughs> did uh, rajiv gandhi who was alive sh- just before that election it's rumored that he also gave consent to that decision he was also part of the decision these are all rumors i can't exactly say but what's your sense my i i knew that they were opposed to me they didn't somehow they want to get me out of, 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 was that a retaliation was that retribution for your your arguments in the bofors case your uh, you know you were one of the most vocal voices in the parliament during the rajiv gandhi years was that the reason what do you suppose was behind it no, i wouldn't say that 
because he came to he, twice, once or twice talked to me also, asked me to come back to me Congress mainstream. Did, 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 uh, did you, were you, uh, I mean, at any point, when Sharad Pawar came back to the Congress in, the 19, in 1986, did you have any thoughts about going back at that point? No, no. Not? I had, uh, he had his own reasons. Uh, Maharashtra politics, compulsions of Maharashtra situation. Uh, I didn't have that, and uh, I don't know. I knew the basic thing was I knew that we will be encouraging BJP uh, to come up in a big way, and which I proved to be proved to be correct. It's proved to be correct, mm -hmm. but uh, just the previous election, just the election before that, the Congress ganged up with the BJP to defeat you. And then the next election, the very next election, you went and contested as a Congress candidate in 96. And you were, you, it was your first loss. You were defeated. Mm -hmm. Did the Congress sabotage you from within? Did a faction of the Congress? That was a general feeling. I, I don't have any exact evidence, but I also contribute to that uh, uh, possibility of a section of Congress going voting against me. Or did the left front, did they, were they, uh, you know, hurt by your leaving for the Congress because you were the left front? for four elections before that, three I elections. I don't know, before. I could not convince them about my uh, argument about BJP. So naturally they took a different line. But you could have continued with the left in Kerala because in Kerala it's still, the BJP is still yet to open the account. You could have... No, that is a different thing. You thought of national... Yes. Your concern was the national yes. politics. And you took a position from that. Exactly. But, and you still remain a member of the Congress party at yeah. 87. You still are a part of Congress, isn't it? Yeah. You are an ASCC member? But I am a silent uh, spectator rather, I would say, because I cannot be active for my health reasons. That's now, but Ever since your defeat in 96, mm. and uh, it's rumored, not again rumored, but there are some accounts of uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh wanting you to join his cabinet in 2004, and Sonia Gandhi uh, being opposed to it, and Sonia Gandhi preventing that. So, what, what actually happened? And I can't say. I know that... Uh... Dr. Manmohan Singh wanted very much to be in the cabinet. Also, uh, people like Pranab Mukherjee supported that. But somehow, maybe because Sonia had some reservations about me, but Cindy, I don't know. It's very, uh, uh, I could not be taken in. And so did you ever regret about your decision to join Congress in the mid-90s from the left? Because for five terms, from for 28 years, you were an MP from Watagara. Your first loss was in 96 when you rejoined the Congress. You say that it was a principled decision because you wanted uh, the the you know you saw the rise of the bjp happening under your you know under your right in front of your eyes and you wanted to make the congress stronger but do you feel that do you regret it ever or do you feel let down by the congress in any way i it was a personal loss for me but i think politically it was correct and i proved to be right yes uh, whatever i said it came true <coughs> but personally, it, it's, it's, it rankles as a... That's true. It, it created problems. 
So did, did the left uh, in Kerala, the CPM, CPI, did they ever ask you to come back to their front or were there any such? Some of them understood me, some of them didn't. So you, you were invited back to the left? Yes, yeah, some of them wanted me to come back. Well, that means leaving Congress. Yes. Which I couldn't, didn't want to. The party that you are a part of, Congress S, it became a very small fraction after you are leaving the party. Mm -hmm. There was uh, A.C. Shanmukhadas, there was uh, Kadanapalli Ramachandran, mm -hmm. V.C. Kabir, mm -hmm. some of the leaders were there. Mm -hmm. But still it was a very small party by the time. Sharad Pawar had already left. Yeah. And so it, uh, P.C. Chako had left. So it was practically a small party. And mm -hmm. so did you ever think of going back to Congress S or specifically my point, did you ever think of joining NCP when it was formed in 1998? No, no, no. no. When Sharad, did Sharad, Sharad must have contacted Yeah, we were good friends. We yes. are still good friends. Yes. That's a different thing. But, but I didn't want to, because there are a lot of things are different in Kerala and Maharashtra. So, uh, Sharad Pawar did contact you, but you did not want to... Not contact. You, he spoke to you. Mm. So, post-2004, you were not so active in politics, in national as well as Kerala politics. So, uh, were you... What? How did you... You know, did you write? Did you... I mean, you were a journalist for a long time. You started your career with R.K. Karanjia's Blitz magazine in Bombay. Then you joined Madhubhumi and you were a correspondent of Madhubhumi for quite some time. So did you ever think of writing, going back to your writing your autobiography or something like that? Or No, not quite. Because uh, I knew I had to stay in politics. I was clear about it. Then naturally, other things like profession comes later, second. So, I stood where I was. Post-2004, when I started my career as a journalist, you were not seen on the Congress platforms like A.K. Antony or Karunakaran or the other veteran leaders. You were not seen on the Congress platforms. So was the, where, was there any particular reason for that? You were not active on the Congress platforms in Kerala, at least. No. I was at that time mostly in Delhi. You were in Delhi? Yes. Okay. And um, I was withdrawing from active politics, electoral politics. There was no point in rushing into this. I felt so. Okay. So how, when did you switch back to Kerala? Was which year, do you remember? When when did you come back to? No, I didn't come. Coming, coming back was only uh, during the COVID days I came and doctors said not to move, move about much. So you were based in Delhi until My then? My brother was a doctor lot of doctors in my family, all of them asked me to take a rest. That was a special interview for the print uh, with veteran Kerala politician K.P. Unikrishnan, now 87, living at his ancestral home in Panyankara in Kodikod. And that's me, Anand, signing off.